Hey guys, just to let you know, we did get new stickers in. These are just like our original stickers. They're really good quality. Our last stickers, we weren't really happy with. These ones are more thicker. They're vinyl. They're just way more durable. So if you want to get your hands on some Neves Knives, Neves Knives stickers, $2 a piece, email us, hit us up on Instagram. Our um, links are in the description. Also, if you have any questions during this video, feel free to ask them down in the comments. I will answer them. I promise you. Also, if you do like the content, please give us a like. And if you're not subscribed already, that'd be awesome too. Let's get to the video. Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today we are talking about knife edges after sharpening and why you're possibly not getting better edge retention after sharpening. Maybe you're possibly getting a lot worse edge retention after sharpening. And, you know, I um, ran into issues like that when I first started sharpening. I would sharpen up the edge and it would seem so sharp and I would be so happy about it, but then I'd go to use it. And... I would start, it would start showing wear like almost instantly. Like it was like, I got just a few cuts in and bam, I, I was getting, you know, um, you know, nicks in the edge or, you know, I would notice I was already getting edge wear. So we're going to talk about why that is. So first thing, you know, what is edge retention? Edge retention is basically how long your edge is going to last through cutting when you're cutting stuff, as long as you're cutting proper stuff, obviously, if you're hitting tile or anything like that, your, <laughs> your edge retention is going to go to crap right away. But through regular use, um, you, you know, how long your edge lasts. Now, um, there's always going to be variables, but the majority of the time, the reason why that's happening, it's from fatigued steel. What is fatigued steel? Well, I have three different assumptions on why it is that you get the fatigued steel, but fatigued steel is basically just what it sounds like, steel that's, um, that's about to fall off or steel that's been messed with so much that now it's not going to hold up strong. It's fatigued. It's, it's ready to fall off or be damaged. And this can happen from both freehand and fixed angled systems. And I'm going to explain both in this video. So three different ways. Number one is you're not holding a consistent angle. And before I go into this, I just want to say, if you're having trouble holding a consistent angle when freehanding, then just do a convex edge. There's nothing wrong with a convex edge, and a lot of times a convex edge can be, there can be benef a lot of benefits to it. But yeah, just start working with a uh, convex edge, and then as you get better and better, then, you know, start practicing more with V-grinds. Obviously still work on it as you, you know, move along, but, you know, doing a convex edge is really easy. And I haven't done a video on that yet. I think I'm going to do a video very soon on how I do my convex edges when I do convex edges. Because I like to do V-grinds, but I also like to do convex edges. It just depends. Also, if you're interested, I'm going to be giving this WorkSharp Precision Adjustable WorkSharp Sharpener away this weekend, Saturday, at the live. The live is 7.30 p.m. Central Time. If you're interested in winning this, I'm going to do it during a live so that people have a better chance of winning it and they can win it right there. So, next... For a fixed angled system, the same thing, not holding a consistent angle. Well, the system's holding the angle for you, but pressure can um, deflect the angle um, movement if your blade starts moving. But a lot of times you're putting pressure and the blade is bending. So if this was the blade inside the fixed angled system, there's the clamp. As your, your uh, stone is going across, it's pushing and flexing that can make you change your angle a lot and this is what that can look like so if you look at the top one compared to the bottom one the bottom one it would be correct you see the grip pattern nice and uniform 
nice and straight. And then up here, you see some of it's straight, but then you have spots where it goes halfway down and it almost seems like there's a line in the edge. Now, sometimes there is those little lines, but if the grip pattern is going all the way down, that's, you know, yeah, it's a little bit of um, mishandling the angle, but it's not going to lead to too much fatigued steel unless if you can, like, it has, like, the two different grit angles. And the grit angle will still be the same, pretty much. Like, you see how these kind of go straight still, but you can really see how there's actual top and bottom to it. Like, uh, the half of the edge is one angle basically and then the other part is is another angle even though it's such a small uh change as you can see how it changes going up so that can lead to fatigued steel now um this is what you're looking for and if you have slight little bits of shadows you know where it looks like a line it's not too big of a deal we're talking about where it's really noticeable but um, like on, from every angle. Now, if you have to like really catch the angle to see it, it possibly could be an issue, but most likely not. Usually, you know, you'd be able to see it from all angles. That's when it really becomes an issue. And what I'm talking about is the line that you see going through. And like, if you notice like how these kind of go up and down and then in between those two, it's kind of like a line going up and through let me grab something to point with like right here see how it's kind of like a line and then right here is kind of like a line and then right here is kind of like a line so when you see that and you can see that the grit angles not matching up from top to bottom perfectly that can lead to fatigue steel now another one is moving through the stones too fast. Now, also, I just wanna say that these are kind of numbered. I should have said this one first because the last one I'm gonna mention is the, the most likely scenario. I have three different scenarios. So technically, this would be the least most likely, um, but moving through your stones too fast. And then number two, which is more likely is not holding a consistent angle. And then the last one I'm gonna talk about is the most likely reason why. So moving through your stones too fast, what does that look like? So if you look at the top picture right here, say if you go to a polished edge, right? You're going through your stones and you're to your last stone, it's a polishing stone. You might still see a little bit of grit lines not a big deal. They should look kind of like this, where they're very light, almost, and I'll show an edge here in a second, show you what it looks like, but then all of a sudden you have one patch of really pronounced grit. You didn't get rid of that grit on your last stone. You want to make sure that with each stone, you get rid of the last grit completely. Don't move to the next stone until. So, I, um, I don't have too much of that, and um, this can happen on a fixed angle system or freehand, it does not matter. Now here is kind of an example, and you see the polished edge and you see the heel of the blade, how you can really see that grip pattern, it's kind of hard to show it, right there. So you can see it, so it kind of looks like that. The rest of it looks pretty good. It looks kind of like what I was showing you where it looks okay. Because you can still see grip pattern a lot of times in a polished edge. That's not a big deal. Let's look at this one. This one's pretty good. This is okay. Let me zoom out. So this is more like what you want to see. Now this has been pretty heavily used since I sharpened it. But you see how it's pretty polished, but you still see you know, scratch marks. That's not too big of a deal because they're not, they're basically from the last stone. Now, if you, like, you can I, I actually just get it to an absolute mirror. In that case, with that one, I didn't really care so much about getting an absolute mirror. But if you do, 
you want to make sure you get to do grip pattern really nicely. Um, here's another mirrored edge, um, but this is basically what it should look like. Now this isn't, let me wipe it. This is not a, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty much an absolute mirror, but it might need to be cleaned. But you don't really see too much scratches. But if you really look at it, you'll see a little bit of grit pattern still left on there. But it's not like extremely pronounced. You don't see all of a sudden scratches like this in between. So, and that can lead to, uh, you know, you trying to polish those out really good and, you know, just working extra hard on your last stone and it not coming off. And then when you're cutting that, you know, parts of the edge, maybe catch more than other parts of the edge. Um, it's not going through the material the same. Uh, you know, this is, like I said, this is the mo most likely or the most unlikely reason, but still could possibly lead to, you know, fatigued steel because you're rushing through your stones and you're not spending enough time with each stone. Now, the most likely reason why is not deburring properly. You're not removing your burr properly. Now, let's say this bottom one is, the burr was all the way up and down. Let's see these dark parts was all the way up and down. And then when you tried to remove it, you removed most of it, but now you still have pieces of burr left. Okay, and you don't realize it. It feels super sharp. It goes through paper really good. It looks nice and clean. But then when you start using it, bam, those pieces start coming out. And when it pulls off, it pulls off steel from the edge that you want instead of the burr just being removed. So I'll do a video pretty soon on deburring an edge properly. But just to break one way down really quick, because there are a few different ways you can do it. One way is when you have, say, your edge very nice, everything's nice and even, your, your grip pattern, let me get a different one, something that will show up a little bit better. There we go. When you have your grip pattern and it's nice and even, all the scratch marks are from top to bottom. It looks nice and good. And you've done it on both sides. And now you've sharpened the both sides and you're on this side and say the steel rolls over, right? So now your burr is on this side. When you go like this, you can feel a wire all the way up and down your edge. Make sure that wire is all the way up and down. You know, make sure it's, it takes your edge completely because when we deburr it, we want it to strip off like a wire and leave uh, a perfect apex. Like this is the burr. Well, once we remove the whole thing, we want it to be nice and perfect. So when you got the burr all the way up and down from heel to tip, and it's all the way on there, you can get a ceramic rod like this, or possibly like this, or possibly, there's so many different way, versions like this. But anyways, so then you lightly, very, very lightly, take your edge and rub it down the ceramic. Do the other side and just go back and forth very, very lightly on the edge. Do that about three to five times on each side, just depending. Keep feeling your edge and make sure it's, you know, because you'll feel it going back and forth from this side to this side to this side, and then bam, it'll just fall off and it'll be gone. Then you can move to the strop and finish it off. But do that enough times to get the whole thing off and check up and down the entire edge. Don't just go like this and say, gone, 
you know, make sure you check the whole thing really good. Um, because sometimes a burr will cut through paper just fine. Paper's really easy to cut through. And you might be mistaken for have removed the, the burr, but it's not. So, like I said, I will do a proper video because there you can also use the same stone you're sharpening on. So, like, say if I was sharpening on this stone and this was my last stone and I was sharpening on it, I can use this stone to to deburr. I can do that. That's another way. There's a few ways to, to remove a burr, but proper burr removal, making sure the whole thing comes off in one strip or at least, you know, completely. That is very important um, because like I said, what will happen is you leave some burr there, then you start cutting and then it falls off during cutting and takes other steel that you want to stay there with it. Um, or, you know, or even it starts getting exposed and now, you know, the burr has just, um, basically appeared bigger now that you started cutting, you know, uh, maybe instead of it being acute, it folded over because it wasn't, um, gone, you know, it might not have been folded over like this. Um, uh, when you tried to remove it, it probably just got stuck like this, meaning straight up from the edge. Meaning like instead of it folding one way or the other way, it's just going straight up. So you think it's part of the edge and you think it's nice and it's fine. But then you start using the knife and all of a sudden it does start bending over, um, again. So, you know, doing a proper burr remover, removal, like I said, I got a few sharpening videos coming up very soon. One, convex edge. I'm going to show how to do a proper convex edge freehand. And also, I will show how to do a proper burr removal. Also, if you guys are ever wanting knives sharpened, I do offer a sharpening service. You can hit me up in the links in the description. I do sharpen knives for people all the time. So definitely hit me up and we will set something up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.